Hi everyone, Neil here from ECS Coffee with our store manager and espresso extraordinaire, Wendy. How's it going? <laughs> it's going good today. <laughs> today we're here to talk to you all and to go over the new La Specialista Arte. 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 Art. A. We're, Art. we're calling it the Arte. We're going to call it the Arte. It sounds fancy. <laughs> so. Art A. Art A. Art A. There we go. Good one. There's the Canadian version, Art A. Um, <laughs> So let's talk about La Specialista because if you do the whole googly thing, you'll see La Specialista has a whole bunch of names attached to it. So I'm going to give you the very quick synopsis of the history of the La Specialista name with Delonghi. About three years ago or so, two and a half, three years ago, they came out just with La Specialista. That was it. One machine, La Specialista. It was kind of to go up against the Breville Barista Express. And then they changed it to having, they had the La Specialista, the La Specialista Prestigio, and the La Specialista Maestro, so there's three. There was La Specialista with no name, the Prestigio, and the Maestro. And then they got rid of the original La Specialista. It's gone. So then there's Prestigio and Maestro. Am I getting this right? Yes. Okay, so there's Prestigio and Maestro as of, say, January 2022 on the market. And now they've come out with La Specialista Art, eh? That's a good one. So now we have three again. So there's La Specialista Art, A, eh? The La Specialista Maestro and the last batch was the Prestigio, all different price points. So this is the Art A. Um, <laughs> we're gonna do that this whole video. Uh, oh, Canada. And uh, when- just trying to make me laugh. And Wendy, who's, who, uh, Wendy knows these machines way better than I do. Right. Right, so- This is way of getting out of working, folks. It's true. <laughs> so what we love, or I love, about this uh, new machine is this. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but it is a funnel. The biggest complaint from everybody uh, with uh, espresso machines is the flow of the grinds into the porta filter. So they've actually given you a little station so it just rests nice and it is flat on or off but a lot of people don't want to put this on their counter which is fine. It's good for um, when you're when you're tamping. Right, yeah. tamping down and then a little spot to put your tampers so that the grinds and mess don't get all over your counter. So when you're not using this you pull it up, you can click it on and with the machine turned on. Did we even plug it in? Did we? I don't know. Let's go check. That's painful sometimes. All right. So there's an so, on off button on, 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 on the side. On the side. On off button on the side. You know what we should probably do? So the, so the other specialists have an auto tamping arm. This one doesn't. Smaller right. footprint. Let's go like very quickly. Oh, okay. You want to do yeah, that first? Yeah, okay. and then we'll, then we'll make it. So it's much smaller footprint. Right, than right. the other ones. Smaller uh, footprint, uh, smaller water tank, smaller hopper, but it's very sleek and the counter profile size is is quite breathtaking. Jack, so, can you throw up the dimensions on here at some point too? Yeah. So, but I have no idea what they are right now, but it's But smaller. even though they don't have the, it doesn't have the tamping station, it still flows really, really nice into this funnel, I find. It's fantastic. Yeah, because one of the reasons I, like you were saying, I don't like the these the manual machines, it's the mess of the grind everywhere, like the Breville Barista mm -hmm. Express. And you kind of wish they all had this. I think it's kind of genius, actually. It is. Yeah. Before we get started, uh, you got your drip tray. You've got your little height little height adjuster for a little espresso cups right. if you want. Um, drip tray comes out, obviously, so it's to clean up. Mm -hmm. uh, steam wand. I know steam wand, so They're not a Panarello. Um, and then we'll go over the, the functionality here in a minute. We're not actually sure how big the, the grinder hopper is because oh. it doesn't say it anywhere. But it has eight, eight settings. Yeah, the tank is 1.6 liters. Okay. Um, and the this holds, well, I'm putting 16 grams into it. 16 That's what grams? I like. Okay. Yeah. So it yeah. seems to work really fine. Uh, so we're going up to uh, grind amount 20. It's giving me around 16 grams with the bean that we're using is 88 miles an hour. Awesome. So as soon as you press it in, you can hear it click, and then it just goes. Fantastic. And no real mess with this doohickey. No. That's so, cool. I know. So you show right that, just tip yeah. that show that to Jack there for a second. Yeah, so it kind of stops it from getting everywhere. Right. Just. Yeah. So this is called the guide, so the tamping guide. So you go down. As soon as you come back up, you unlock it. And see, you're going to have not nice. have a mess all over the counter. It's, it's light, great. but it works. So Note to all the other people that make machines that do automatic grind. You should have a funnel of yeah, some kind. Yeah, really smart. So we're going to lock this in. 
Again, new machine, so you might have to hold it for a little while until the gasket starts working. This is a, a pretty tall for an espresso glass. So we're gonna do a double shot. So if you want to do a double shot on this machine, you hit the two times button. I have the double basket inside. Even It's a single wall this time around too. So a single wall is so non-pressurized. Non For those yes. that are new to espresso, pressurized baskets do help you and they're a little more forgiving right. on your grind. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the original issues that people had with the DeLonghi was that you couldn't get a single wall, you could only have a double. So yes. yeah. it's nice to see we have a single. It is. Uh, so you'd have to adjust your tamp pressure if it's not pouring properly. Uh, with this machine also, before I hit brew, it comes in three temperature settings. Oh. So they, they do give you uh, a big explanation in the manual um, about what temperatures you should be using, anywhere between 92 and 96. I always find that the hotter the better for me. Uh, so you just, based yeah. on preference. Um, I don't know why you preference. want a cooler one, to be honest uh, Fresh roasted beans yeah. and, and dark oily beans, which I don't recommend you put in, even though they do say that in the manual. Yes. It might gum up your grinder. Manual, don't, manual is written. We don't know why they put that in there, but mm -hmm. oily beans are always bad for grinders. So um, maybe don't use those. Unless maybe you had a pre-ground oily bean and you were just grind, you're right. tamping it yourself. Right, if you're so, scooping it in, yeah. Yeah, if you're scooping it into your, your porta filter here, that mm -hmm. might be the reason to do it, but don't put oily beans up here. You're just gonna cause yourself some grief. Mm -hmm. So I love drinking Americano. That's what I do every morning. I just wanted to show you that button because we're always doing hitting espresso. So yeah. we might as well try an Americano because it does uh, free flowly. And if, because I'm at the two times, not only is it going to give me two times the water for the espresso shot, you can program it separately for more water. Oh, excellent. Yeah. So as soon as you hit the two times, it's doing both. So and this is actually a true Americano? It is. Okay. So, yeah. so for those that don't know an Americano, we have a video on that. Um, but Americano is espresso with clean hot water or mm -hmm. clean hot water with espresso, depending on how you right. make it. Uh, whereas a lot of machines, uh, you would literally just keep running the water through the coffee puck. So that's not a true Americano. Um, it's kind of more of a, just a long coffee. Right. So Americano is, is just really hot water. You saw me flipping the mugs there. I was fooling around with the programming and I did program it really big and okay. I thought, oops, it's gonna <laughs> overflow. Yeah. I mean, we could do a shot or we no, could do an Americano. Americano. All see. right. So Let's I programmed it for two ounces to come through and then eight ounces to drop on top. All right. So I just figured. So what's cool about this one versus some of the other guys is that you get your hot water comes out of a separate tap. Right. So you've got your um, nice flow. Mm-hmm. Look at that. And this was uh, almost out of the box with this one. So out of the box, it came pre kind of set to yeah. give you a, a it, decent it gives shot. You a, it tells you to start at grind size five, which you should always do what the manual tells you to. And we just found we came down a notch and that yep, was perfect. That was yeah. And now you'll see the water's coming out separately for a true Americano, mm -hmm. which is which is really, really great. You don't have to move your cup over. Uh, you don't have to do anything else to get the hot water or the steam right. wand. It's just right there, which is great. Yeah. I didn't see, did we get to the optimal zone? We must have. I didn't see if we got to the optimal zone. I forgot to check. But uh, I always go by taste. If I have a sip and it tastes good, yeah. then I don't worry about it. It's ah! funny. <laughs> Well, we could do it again. We'll, we do, we'll, do, we'll do it again. Yeah, we'll do an espresso shot. We'll do like a latte or something. Yeah, yeah. But we get that a lot. We, people buy these machines. And like, I didn't get to the optimal zone. I'm like, if it tastes good and you're happy with it, don't worry too much. No. Just keep playing no. with it. Because mm -hmm. every time you change your bean, um, you might have to play with it to get to the right right taste. And you might have to play with the grind a little because some beans are denser than others, depending on the roast, depending on the, the origin. That has robusta. Yeah. So you do have to play with this. It's like, we've, I, I say this in a lot of the videos, it's like buying an oven. Uh, it doesn't make you a chef. So you're buying an appliance, you gotta figure out the recipe. So what you're putting in and what you're doing with it. Yeah. I can't cook those save my life, so I'm not no. one to really should say that. So yeah, well, we'll see. Cause I didn't really look to see how big this glass was. <laughs> there we go. Wow. Ta -da! This is what I meant to do. That's gotta yeah, be a that's good, it. that's gotta be a 10 ounce mug though. So that's a good solid size. That's pretty wide. I'm gonna give that a 10 ounce. It's good. Oh, awesome. It's very smooth. So Even set. though it's not super, super dark, it's it's actually, nice. you can have a sip and drink it black. All right, here, All right. give me some. Sharesies. Yeah, I know. Ugh. It's 2022. Uh, DeLonghi uh, knockbox yep. is extra. Does not come with it. Does not come with. But uh, this um, porta filter handle has some nice weight to it, as well as the tamper. This time around, they did a fantastic job. Yeah, they used to just both. be plastic on, yeah. on a lot of the, a lot of the, mm -hmm. I find a lot of these, um, I don't call them entry level, but a lot of the big brands, you know, so Breville, also known as Sage around the world, DeLonghi, uh, 
and um, and brands that are sort of in that mid market, they seem to be upping their game with espresso machines in the last couple of years quite a bit. Yeah. I don't know if it's because a lot of people were staying home, but even even prior to the pandemic, it seemed like there was just a a lot of innovation in the space, which is really nice. So kind of excited to see what happens in the future. Yeah, I was I was quite very um, impressed with this out of the box. Yeah, yeah, you okay. Know, I didn't have to fool around too much. Um, we just did the uh, Dedica video and I had to, it took me uh, four or five shots to get, to get the perfect right. pour, yeah. this one, no. So we're gonna screw up the grinder. Right. And see what happens. You wanna so go coarse or fine? How, how are you supposed to adjust the grinder, Neil? While, when? It's, while it's operational. Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> never adjust a grinder. <laughs> By doing this. So I was just afraid that he was going to just, you know. Should I go coarse or fine? What do you it's think? Up to you. Let's go, let's go fine. All right. It's a dry bean, uh, so he can go that fine. If you were using a, an oilier bean, like even with a little bit of sheen, you wouldn't want to do that. You would tamp it and it would be like a hockey puck and the water would be trying to get through and it would so, be no good. So I'm going to tamp this now. I'm going to use my little mat so I don't mess up the counter. Not that we're too worried about that. And I'm going to tamp it. Say, just. Let's say I don't tamp it enough. So again, part of that recipe, if you're the chef, let's say I don't tamp it enough. If I'm, it pours perfect, I knew, that'll be amazing. If it pours perfect, it will be amazing. I'll be very impressed with this machine, but pretend I'm new. <laughs> where is it, where is it? Like I said, pretend I'm new. All right, we're in. Let's, let's use, uh, we're gonna do espresso that shot. One? All right, right let's see go. how we go. Okay. So you wanna dial it to espresso? You wanna go to espresso. Yep. And we wanna hit, where's it? Okay. 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 Yep. Let's see if we get the Altima Zone. On the Optima zone here, you'll notice it's kind of all the way over. Does it pre-infusion first? Yeah, let's see what happens here. If we get a decent shot or not. And you only have it at medium heat. It's gonna overpressurize for sure, see? So you see what's happening here? We're getting, at the end of the Optima zone, we're not getting anything out because what's happened is the, the coffee is too fine. Yeah. I always think baby powder and rocks. So baby powder, imagine trying to get water through baby powder, it won't work. And if it's rocks, it's just gonna go through and just Even though water. you didn't tamp it hard, yep. it's still not. Yeah, it's, it's you're, getting, you're getting one side decent, one side not, which means it's channeling, it's finding the path of least resistance. Look at you with the fancy I know, words. Fancy, right? <laughs> and then, actually, we're getting a decent. I didn't use that actually, on purpose. It's, well, it's not no. awful, but you can see the, how it changed from the last that shot. That is awful. We did. I, I would probably drink it. No. But I'm not that much of a star. I would, well. All right. Yeah, well, you don't want the comments, Neil. I know. I know. <laughs> For the fancy people. All right, so it's. So we would hit OK to stop that because it's going to. It's, it's going to be, be terrible anyway. And let's have a look at the, the puck afterwards. So you can grab that glass and I'll. Mm -hmm. wait. The puck's there probably go. pretty wet. Yeah, see how wet that is? Ooh. Isn't that awful? It's so it's saying the water couldn't get through. Um, and if you have that happen on your special machine, whether it's the long or anything else, that's going to be yeah, your grind off. And as you saw from that first shot we did, we didn't have that. So this is where, you know, having a recipe is part of the game when it comes to making espresso. Right. All right. Let's maybe wipe that out. Mm -hmm. We can rinse you it. Yeah. Don't mind. I don't mind. Grab me a, I'm going to, I'm going to wipe this down with this guy here. The cloth is, yeah, you got it? I got it. All right. Mm -hmm. So then we're going to go back. We're going to make this again. We're going to make the espresso. We're going to go back to, what are we on? Four? 20. Is it on four? Grind setting, was it number four? No. Uh, five. Five, okay. No, I thought four. you said it was four. Yeah, four. you said you were on five when you first started. Five to start, All right. four, yeah. So now we're gonna let Wendy do it. And we're gonna go over here and then we're gonna go like so. And then I'm gonna change this to, I'm gonna change this to four. While wh it's running. While it's running, not beforehand, okay? Okay, so. There we go. The shot might not be perfect because we changed it partway through, but we'll see. Yeah. But it should be a lot better than the last one. Should yeah. be. This is where, again, with any of these you machines, you got to play with it. No, you tamp it this time. Not used to such fancy. Look at that. Fancy not used to fancy equipment. mats. There. That's what we do here at ECS. We got fancy equipment. <laughs> By the way, all these machines, we've got about, what, 40 or 50 that you can come in and actually play with. Yeah. Uh, um, please ask our staff for help. We don't want you burning yourself or screwing them up. Uh, yeah, but we've got about 40 or 50 here in our location in Burlington, Ontario, Canada. Come down. Experts are here. We can take you through it. Not that I'm an expert, but I know a little bit. But you can also use it yourself. You yeah. don't have to just watch. You can watch anybody on YouTube. Watch me make it here. But it's something else to come in and I'll say, go ahead. Like, you can right. try it. We're still, look, we're over. Yeah. So the, it, the grinder just didn't adjust. And we need water. So. Huh. Well, maybe that's part of the problem. <laughs> Third test. We're going to try that again. Okay, so right. we're on to the next attempt because, well, as you saw, when we screwed up the grind, <laughs> it, we? We screwed up. 
Now we're fixing the grind. We're gonna see if this time, this time it works. Fingers crossed. And we do this to show you guys, this is kind of what you're gonna have happen to you, um, mm -hmm. almost with any of these machines, but you're gonna have to play with them a little bit. Um, if you don't wanna go through that, that playing with different beans, then buy yourself a super automatic. So a super automatic, that's what I like. Press a button, coffee comes out, you're off to the races, you don't have to do, really do anything. Um, I've never touched the grind setting on my super automatic once, so. All right, let's see what we it get this time. It does for you, that's why. It does it for you. Maybe I need to clean the screen because that last one was so mucky. I don't know. Oh, whoop, All right. whoop. Getting a bit better. A bit better, yeah, it's gonna come back down. That's a lot better. There we go. Yeah, so. Probably the next round. We still have channeling because it's coming out yeah. of one side. And what that means, you explain. Uh, channeling, I probably tamped on an angle. Even though it gives you the shoot to press down, when you lift it up, it could still be on an angle. So what I should have done is when I took this off, is just to make sure this was a level tamp. And so what, what does that mean for the actual final result? Because you can see it's kind of fixing itself here. But what does that mean for final result typically? The f if it channeled at yeah. first, if you're doing two shots, it you know, you'd get one different than the other. But yeah. if it's all going into the glass and it sorts itself out, it can come across a little bit sour, but yeah. It, if it's it's, it may still itself. be drinkable though. Oh yeah, right? it's just totally Just if you're drinkable. having two glasses there and you're doing one in white, one yeah. will be lousy, one won't be. So you, you right. don't, ideally you don't want that. You don't want that, so, but if it's all going into the same glass. All right, let me try this one. I more. drink it, so. Yeah, it's a little sour. A little bit sour. Yeah. So if you do multiple shots, again, another barista tip. Tip? Tip. <laughs> I was gonna say trip. Trip. Uh, so is to wipe, wipe it out instead of rinsing it because it's still fairly hot um, and it makes it a lot tastier. So, I keep forgetting to put my little funnel on. So, do you want to tamp it this time? No, you do it since you've been consistently doing it. All right. So, what I'm going to do look? here is put my glasses on and just see if I feel like I've got an even tamp. Yeah, it's pretty even. Squish nice. it down on that side a little bit more. Let's get that I'll Put going. it on the little stand. I'm not used to having that. You're going to have to get one of those for home. Lock it in. I think Wendy has 17 machines at home on her counter. <laughs> <laughs> Every time there's a new one, Wendy wants to take it home. <laughs> I do. It's just like, okay, here we go. Fingers crossed. Well, we shouldn't really have to cross our fingers. We're professionals, don't you know? We're professionals. <laughs> well, you're, you're a professional. No. All right, how are, we, how are we doing this time? No, I just do this in my sleep most mornings, so there we go. There we go. Ooh. All right. Oh, there we go. It's yeah, there we go. For sure. So you can see we're getting the honey coming mm -hmm. out of both sides. That's better. Um, yeah. Of course, we didn't start timing this optimal zone. We're right in that kind of middle point, which is great if you actually want to use that for visualization. But I think the point of this exercise is to show you that your coffee bean is going to affect your, your grind and your tamping is affecting how your coffee is going to come out. So ideally, you want to make sure that you play with this a little bit. Don't get too frustrated when you buy one of these machines if it's not perfect right away. Just do what Wendy's been doing. And again, adjust this only when it's operational. Okay, so we have a really nice shot here. Right. And why don't we just, well, you know, why don't we go across the front and we'll tell people what is on oh, the front. I already hit the steam. Do you want me to make the, can I do this first? Let's do the steam first. All right, thanks. All right, we'll do the steam first, since we already hit it. Hit the steam button. I want to see some latte art out of this. No. I can get the microphone, just I don't know about the art. I know, I'm you know, I just don't do it often enough. So I'm a Americano girl, so. Yeah, I'm kind of the same, I don't really drink a lot of cappuccinos. And really, in your day-to-day -day morning, if you're just drinking this for yourself at home, you know, unless you really want to create art for your significant other or, or somebody and you want to show off, I mean, you can do it with this, it's just you need to practice on that. And there's mm -hmm. tons of instructional videos on doing that. I haven't watched them though. Because so just to let you know also, your tray is going to fill up with, with water if you're using the steam wand. It's just letting off the pressure. Yeah. This little red guy will pop up when it's, uh, when it's full. So I've been told 
You That's rock this around until it looks like wet paint. Um, if you want my, to make sure it's microfoam. So I'm trying not to get too uh, many big bubbles on top as more of a cappuccino. I'm, I love a flat white. So if you roll this around until it looks like wet paint, it breaks up all the bubbles. Kind of does look like Yeah. Thing. Yeah, good job. And then, but then again, it's the art thing. I wish, maybe I need to spend some time. Ooh, Ooh look at that. that is nice. I know. And I drip it all over the floor. Uh, it looks like a hammer. Or, <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, uh, no, Wiley Coyote. <laughs> Ears. Look at that. There's his nose. Oh, it is. It and does then there's look like Wiley, Wiley Coyote's head. There you go. He's chasing the Roadrunner. There you go. It's there you Wiley go. Coyote. That's our Wiley Coyote. Uh, yeah. Non Super genius. Try to do that twice. <laughs> do you want to give it a shot and try it? <laughs> there you go. So, onwards. Let's right. go across the front panel. Yes. Now so, it will indicate for you uh, if you need more water, if you need to descale. Uh, the dosing level we went over, we're at 20 right now, and that is dependent on your bean density. Uh, single or double shot is going to be the um, amount of grinds coming from the grinder into the port of filter. If you uh, have the double basket in, you're on double. Uh, single if you're on the single basket, that's what's going into the port of filter. Uh, different temperatures, 92 to 96 degrees, depending on how hot you want it. Uh, there's a lot more information on that in the manual. Uh, it's actually telling you what you should brew it at, but just do what you prefer in my opinion. Uh, so for espresso, Americano, and hot water. And when you're programming, you hold down the OK button while it's brewing uh, until you get the desired quantity of water. And then you let go, and then it stops the flow, and that's uh, overriding the programming. And you, when you're doing that for the Americano, it lets you do it independently. As well. Oh, excellent. So the amount of water espresso through the espresso and, water. and then water. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, and then hot water. So depending on what color of tea you have, if you're burning tea on this, you can go from 90 to hot water to comes out of here or the seam one? Here. Yeah, out of the hot water. Yeah, yeah which is great. You don't want it. It is, that's yeah. That's kind of gross if, if your water is coming out of the steam one, yeah. in my opinion. <laughs> Fair enough. Sorry. <laughs> that, and that's pretty much the machine. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's compact and it's, uh, I think it's really well. Because you, you've never been, uh, with the special leases in the past, you know, Wendy, you've, you're, you're a Breville person. I am. Um, you've really been a fan of Breville. So when the special leases came out, you struggled a little bit with them um, for the complexity. But when this landed, you sort of went, wow. Yeah. I, I, it was very nice to look at and out of the box, it gave us a fantastic shot and all of the accessories that go with it from the funnel to the tamper and to how it brewed. Uh, this, it, the single baskets, I think, is what makes the biggest difference for me, though. It just flowed really nice. So they're not dual wall baskets. They're single wall baskets. Can you buy dual wall for, for this? Um, you yeah, buy, you well, buy you should wall. be able to because, well, I don't know. Yeah. That's something I guess we have to uh, look at. Well, let's find it. out. And that's because the machine isn't actually in the market Technically, in Canada, there are some out there, I think, in the States. Uh, I think it was pre-launched late last year in certain markets, but it is new to us here in Canada. So accessories, again, with supply chain issues in 2022, we're not mm. sure when all that's going to happen. But uh, it is the, the entry level of the last specialty still line. As we mentioned right. before, there are two others now. Mm -hmm. It is the entry level. This is going to go up against the Barista Express from Breville uh, or Sage, if, if you want to compare, would you say? Yes. Yeah, and I think yeah. it does a pretty darn good job. It does. Yeah. The 51 millimeters, so uh, they have it for their other machines. So if people are looking to order replacement baskets, I think they should 51, yeah. just pit, fit right into this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, yeah. well, that's it, folks. I uh, hope you enjoyed this review and the expertise of Wendy. I oh. uh, hope you got something out of it and um, maybe a little bit of tips and tricks on how to get this going if you've already purchased it and how to get your perfect shot out of there. Uh, until next time, I have been Neil and... I've been Wendy. This has been Wendy. <laughs> Uh, if you liked what you saw, please give us a subscribe, a like, and hit that bell. Uh, that really helps us continue to provide content for you on all of the great things that are happening in espresso and coffee, at least here in Canada and probably worldwide. Until next time, thanks again. Bye -bye.